I'm gonna introduce my beautiful husband, Darren Davis. Thanks, Faith. Thanks. Right. Lots of love in the air in 2020. Come on. We had a lot of marriages this last year, and there's going to be more to come in 2020. Come on, girls. Some guys are going to get some courage and ask them to marry them. Come on. It's time. So welcome. What a, what a great start to a new year, right? This morning's amazing. By the way, if we need some seating, if you guys, I think there's some needs for some seats. If you guys don't mind squeezing in. Also, there's some front row options as well if you guys would like to come up. Thanks, everybody, for being here today. What a, what a great start to the new year as, as the Harbor Church. Um, I want to just uh, let you guys in on a couple of things real quick, and then we're going to jump into the Word of the Lord. First time guests, welcome. My name is Darren Davis, Senior Leader here, part of an amazing, amazing team. Uh, there's many that, that equip from this pulpit, and we're together in one in our purpose for God, you know, to see Jesus glorified in our region. Um, but there's some amazing things happening as we move into this new year, starting this Tuesday. For the entire month of January, we're going to have worship and prayer right here at 7 o'clock every week. And, um, and really, this is for, listen, this is for our whole church to just take one month, minimally, just to cultivate this, this culture in our hearts, to take time away, as, as Amanda was saying about date nights, but to take time away on a date night with the Lord, right? And just come before him. And we've, we've been working hard to prepare for this. Um, we, we've had our furnace in, in, in back in the day, and, and we're really moving forward with this vision. But we're taking an entire month, and then we'll be going monthly with these furnace times on Tuesday nights, first Tuesday of every month. It's going to be incredible. And there is on, t on Tuesdays of every week, if you're not getting them already, we give out an email. I know no one opens up emails anymore. But if you see one from the harbor, open that bad boy up. Put that on a star, a priority, right? Because every week we give a, a really important recap of stuff going on. If you don't know what's going on at the harbor, it's because you're not opening up that email or you're not signed up on it. But there's going to be a prayer and fasting guide in that email this week. So it's going to give you our perspective, our culture, on what it means to pray and how you can tie in fasting or setting things aside in devotion to the Lord for those times of prayer, all right? I haven't looked at social media in four days and I feel like a free man. Amen. Holy cow. I decided to do a negativity fast and so I went ahead and just got off social media altogether. Come on, somebody. Seriously, like whatever is like consuming your time and your attention, your energy, like lay it down. Just take, just listen, social media and all the likes that you're getting will be there waiting for you in February. Come on, somebody. So just, just take a breather from whatever the Lord may be convicting you to just kind of lay down. It's going to be incredible, all right? Super important. Next Sunday is a key meeting for us here at the harbor because we're, we want to launch off this year and we want to remind you of some things that we presented in September, but give some updates on where we're heading. In fact, today is going to tie into the meeting next week. I'm going to, I'm going to preach like a foundational spiritual message on, on, on what we're really going for. And next week is going to be some real practical details that we really need you to be here to hear about, like some stuff that's going on in our heart and how we're all going to be moving together as one. Everybody say one. one. Everybody shot one. one. We can only go as far as we go together. That's a kingdom principle. This isn't about one person or 10 or 20% of the congregation, the body. It's about 100% of people going together in the mission, tying our heart into what the Lord has for us, right? Treasure, time, talents, resources, man, giving it all to Jesus as we move forward in this year. So next Sunday is, is very, very key, and it's about getting connected. Amanda was talking about that. It's about getting connected. Services are great, but we got to enter past that veil and get connected. And one of the ways every single Sunday this month, including next week, 
um, we're going to talk about is our Friday nights because we've been, you know, trying to just move these things forward. And, and we, by the grace of God, are going weekly starting in February. I know that's a bold statement for me to say, but the Lord has it for us to make space on Friday nights for people that would maybe never come to a Sunday morning never come into a traditional Sunday morning service. And, and these are going to look a little bit different. They're going to feel a little bit different because they're Friday night, but they're going to have the same heart of what we're doing here today as we're equipping people, as we're worshiping, as we're ministering to people. And we're really trusting God for something huge. So in the lobby today and every Sunday, everybody say every Sunday, <laughs> during the month of January, we're going to be having some folks out there, Mia and some others that are part of the leadership team on Friday nights, talking to you about ways you can get involved. Like, listen, just say, God, I'm going to find one Sunday a month minimally to start off with with serving somewhere. Serving is a key value here. And, and yes, there's destiny and purpose in you for all kinds of great things. But just make the first step and say, hey, I'll get involved wherever I need to be involved. That's a good heart. That's just a good way to enter in, right, to servanthood of the Lord. Just saying, hey, whatever it takes, um, I'm reading this book right now. It's already transforming my life called The Compassionate Samurai. And it's this whole concept of being a warrior, but also having a heart of compassion. And, and one of the, the cultures of, of samurais, if you will, in the natural is, is to be servants of the greater good. Like in their boldness and in their, their warrior-like ethos, they're, they're taking ground not for themselves and not doing it rudely, but they're doing it for the sake of the betterment of other people. And this is what we're called to do in the body of Christ, right, for our region. Can I get an amen? So it's really, really important. So see them out in the lobby. I expect a ton of people to say, hey, listen, I'll come in, I'll greet, I'll usher, I'll do whatever it takes because we want to serve our region, right? This isn't a bless me club here. We're not just about harbor people just coming in week after week. We want to see new faces. In fact, I got a call yesterday, voicemail. I listened, was able to listen to it later in the evening, but it was from a lady who was one of our first members here at the harbor way, way back when we first started, you know? And, and I don't know if she's here this morning, but I just want to honor her and her family back in the day for when they came because it it's a big deal when you're starting a church and you have people just saying, hey, I trust you. I believe in this vision, and they step in. And I felt like through a, a, a little text from a friend of mine um, that, that there's going to be many, many new people coming in in 2020. <laughs> many, many, right, that are going to trust us when in some ways, you know, people are, are, are afraid to trust. They're afraid to trust leaders. They're afraid to trust churches. And they're going to say, hey, I'm going to come in because there's something authentic happening in this place. So it's going to be an amazing, amazing year. Listen, we're going to just uh, jump into the word of the Lord this morning because we're going to take communion. I'm going to have to move fast today. But we're looking at one heart today. It's, it's really a, a, a key thing that God put on, 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 on my spirit as we entered into this new year, having one heart. And I want to read this verse out of Jeremiah chapter 32. This is powerful, powerful verse. This is a promise over his people. Look what he says. And this is really a reflection of his grace. He says, and I will give them, the Lord will give us, one heart and one purpose. And then he defines it, to worship me forever. And then he says this is for their own good and for the good of their descendants. You know, I don't know if we think about this, but there's a lot at stake when it comes to just giving everything to Jesus, or not. Like, it's not only, a, it could affect our lives, but it can affect the future generations that come after us. You know, I wasn't gonna jump here right away, but you know, there's this verse in Revelation where Jesus is writing a letter to the church. I don't know if we write too many letters anymore, right? My son, we're, we're really praying and believing God. You can take that down just for now, um, just for a second. But we're believing God for the right school to be the right fit for him as it relates to an athletic scholarship. And I was talking to a friend of mine who has a connection to this coach. And he was telling me, he said, Darren, this is old school and this coach is old school. But he said, what I think your son should do is go ahead and sit down and write this coach a letter. 
Because now it's, you know, all the recruiting stuff's online and you're sending these huddle videos via, twi via Twitter and it's just a whole different world. He said, have them sit down and from the heart write this coach a letter. And he said, it's actually going to probably blow his mind because no one's doing that nowadays. That's not how recruiting works nowadays. And Jesus is sitting down writing the church a letter. And here's what he says. He says to the angel of the church in Laodicea, this is the message from the one who is the amen, the final word on everything, the faithful and true witness, the beginning, check out this language, of God's new creation. Talk about a new year. I mean, talk about a new a millennial. Talk about a new eternity. Like here, the, here is the one that is writing to the church. He says, I know all the things that you do, that you are neither hot nor cold, but I wish that you are one the other, one or the other. Now, let me just take a minute right here quickly, because it's not my message, but it's important to set the stage. In the kingdom of God, by the grace of God, because he's the one that is distributing one heart and one purpose to our church. The only way the culture of this kingdom works is either all in or nothing. You see, in the world, people, you know, might excel. Some might be kind of mediocre. Others might be kind of disconnected, failures, if you will, like, you know, are feeling like that anyhow. But you see, that's the culture of this world. For Jesus... It's actually not even all out. It's like for everybody, like it's all in. And it's something that Jesus says, I am giving to you. Because I want you just to think for a minute here as you go into 2020. Take a deep breath and say, you know what? Like I'm going to be operating out of something that's beyond myself, that's being freely given to me. And all I have to do is receive it and I will be operating at 100% capacity by the grace of God. See, that takes all the pressure off. It's like, man, I don't know about you, but man, because here's the deal. As we're going into 2020, we need to also, we need to take up some stuff, which is one heart, one purpose, worship him forever, be sold out like with all of our hearts. And we also need to leave some stuff behind. How many of you in 2019, without a show of hands, got beat up pretty bad? I'm feeling pretty condemned. Feeling like maybe there wasn't a future for you. Maybe there wasn't something special to your life. Maybe, you know, whatever it was. Maybe went through some discouragements or some disappointments or whatever. Leave that stuff behind in 2019. Leave it there and move on and receive this gracious gift from Jesus which, trust me, it is, it is a, a fuel and a fire from another realm. If you just open up your heart, he will come and take residence on the inside of you. And he will perfect and complete what he began in you if you just say yes. Get rid of the shame, the condemnation, all the feelings of failure. Everybody awake this morning? Come on. So that's important. Here's what I want to submit, and then I'm just going to give you five, five quick keys on how we get there. One of the largest, biggest, most massive values that we have here at the harbor, which I think is just, it's not even the harbor, it's, it's the kingdom of God, is the massive value of intimacy with the Lord. Like, if you were to ask me, Darren, what is the harbor all about? I would say intimacy with God. 100%. Because he's promised to give us this. One heart, one purpose. Wor what do you think worship is all about? It's, it's, it's being intimate with the Lord. It's more than singing songs on a Sunday, as amazing as today was. But intimacy is to be in close acquaintance with or to be familiar with. And the one heart and one promise that God has given us and that, that he wants us to step into full force is intimacy with him, which will lead to intimacy with yourself. Listen, for so many years, I didn't even know who I was. 
And sometimes we gotta really go there. We've been talking a lot as a family recently about different things that trigger us. Anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> you don't even know why, but boom, there it is. I just triggered for whatever reason. It's gonna be really important for us to sit with the Lord concerning those things and then sit with ourselves. And not in the midst of that come under a bunch of condemnation and feel so horrible. No, sit with it, because otherwise we're gonna run from it, right? And we're never gonna ultimately deal with it. Like God wants to bring transformation, but he can only be, bring transformation to those who are willing to cooperate. And he wants to give permission for you to come into a shame-free zone and cooperate with his transforming power by becoming familiar with him, his nature. Let me just call this out right now. The enemy is going to challenge the nature of the Father every single day in your mind and tell you he's not good, he doesn't care about you, he's not all this, that, and the other, and he's going to speak all of these lies. Listen, you just need to become familiar with the God who is good so that when the waves come, you ride on top of them instead of being bowled over by them. Right? So become acquainted with the Father, with Jesus, with the person of the Holy Spirit. So then you can come into this place where you're acquainted with yourself. Because then you can become intimate with other people. Be familiar with other people. You know, obviously there'll be rings of that that you give people permission in as they earn that trust, right? But that's what it's all about. We're going to love others as we love our Come on, we're gonna love others as we what? Love ourselves. God is passionately in love with you. I had this guy, he's a, he's, a, he's a big time coach. He goes all over the world and stuff and teaches all these executives, major coaching. And I just got, you know, how to connect with him. He, he's not even following the Lord. And from that one meeting, he calls me up over Christmas. And he says, Darren, I gotta meet with you. And he said, it's, it's, it's nothing to do with my coaching practice. It's just something going on with my heart spiritually. And I was like, Ugh, I'm busy. I have some time off. But man, the Lord was like, no, do this because there's something happening in this man's heart. And we sat down and, and we had some time together. And let me tell you something, people, he said, from the first time I had a meeting with you, I felt something was totally different and I was drawn to your life. Listen, that's been something that me and Wendy and our family, we've cultivated over years and years and years and years. God, I want to be acquainted with you. I want to be acquainted with my own heart. And then from there, people are, listen, when they get around you, you may think, why would somebody want to talk to me? They want to talk to you because you carry Jesus. You carry worship on the inside. You carry an authentic relationship. And people can tell the difference. They'll feel safe with you to come and sit and bear their heart. It's beautiful. So intimacy is the key. And here's what I wanna say, and I'm gonna give you five keys that we're gonna get there this year in having this and walking this thing out as we conclude our time together. But I wanna submit that you need to understand this. Right now is the only time in the scope of all eternity where we have been given the gift of faith access to faith by his grace to see how deep we can go in intimacy with God, with ourselves, and with other people. This is it. I'm leaving behind the enemy robbing any more days from that purpose in my life every single day in 2019. 2019. You can just stay right back there because this is my one chance my one opportunity. Because otherwise, we're going to be before him. We're going to see the Lord. We're going to be, you know, all things will be made perfectly clear, right? Right now we see through, you know, a glass dimly, if you will, as Paul says in Corinthians. But there's coming that day where we'll see everything in full perspective. So now we get to journey the journey of faith. <laughs> you know, to see how deep we can go in intimacy. It's all about love. It's all about learning to love God, learning to love ourselves, learning to other people. I know this sounds like rocket science, but it's really not, right? So simple, so simple. So five keys to get there. You know, in the, in the Old Testament, I love the imagery 
of, of various books in the Old Testament. And I think one of my favorite ones is the book of Joshua. Because it, it so represents who we are personally and who we are corporately. As, as a picture for us to see like what the Lord did then and what he was trying to show us and what he is actually up to right now. And the story is centered around this character Joshua, right, who was under the tutelage of Moses. And we know the story where the people, um, you know, are freed from Egypt, you know, freed from their bondage, slavery. See the imagery there? Like that's, that's where, where we were before Jesus. And they're on this journey should have been a short journey, very short, like a yes, kind of short. Yes, okay, you're in. Journey to the promised land, right? And they're going into all that God has for them. And there's some things that transpire in the midst of this story that I think give us some insight into like what is God up to with us to give us some keys to unlock this door into where we're supposed to go. And we see it at first when Joshua is, is right there. They're on this point in, in, in Israel called Mount Nebo. And, they, and it's a place where you can look out and you can literally see all of the promised land. And Moses, the leader, up to that point, passes away. He dies. He, he's not able to enter into the promise. And Joshua is sitting there, you know, going, my God, what is going on here, man? I just lost my leader, my friend, my mentor, my father. And he's trying to figure this thing out. And, and, and I think many of us have probably been through that same thing in a, in a variety of ways. You'll have to fill that into your own story. Like, man, thinking that you, you can see where you're going and all of a sudden, boom, something hits, right? And then you're kind of going, whoa, whoa. You're kind of staggered for a minute and you're kind of wondering, what's going on here? Is this, what, what did this all mean? I thought I was freed from my bondage. I'm here right on the precipice of going into what God has for me. And then we take this hit and we can get a little, little kind of sidetracked. But what God wants you to know, and there's faith by the grace of God for you to know this morning, this first point, the promise hasn't changed. No matter what you've been through, what you will go through, the promise hasn't and the promise will not change. Look at this in Joshua chapter, chapter 1 verse 3. The Lord says this to Joshua straight up after, after Moses passes away. He said, I promise you what I promised to Moses. Wherever you set foot, you will be on land that I have already given to you. I got like a come on, like really quiet over here in the corner. <laughs> on the inside, I want to explode right now. <laughs> you know, I was, I was sitting there this morning. I, Wendy and I are on a whole different diet. I've been on that since my, my, my surgical procedure. That's a whole other story. But I'm feeling awesome right now because I've, I've lost like 14 pounds. I'm like, whoo, it feels good. And this is not just another fad thing, man. I'm sticking to this deal by the grace of God. <laughs> Oh, man. I'm a sugar head. I love carbohydrates. I'm one of those kind of guys. But, I'm, I, man, I'm, I'm going for this thing. But I was sitting there, and I was thinking, you know what? I eat giants for breakfast. You know, they're my bread. You know what I mean? Like, when it comes to food, like... Because my mom, when I was being raised up... You guys can go ahead and pass out the communion. When my mom, when I was being raised up, the team can come back up. You know, she used to keep all the sweet cereals from us and, and we, you know, you know, I never got any of the Twinkies or the Ding Dongs or any of that stuff in my lunch. And I was really disillusioned by this and she said, Darren, this is good for you. This is good for you. This is what's best for you. But when we're journeying through trouble, through challenges, there is grace for us to be strong not in our own strength, and courageous because the promise has not changed and the promise will never change. We have a land that's for us. And listen, go ahead and look at your problems as bread for yourself, as food for you to eat because they actually make you better, not more bitter. Come on. 
Like our portion is to eat these giants for lunch, for breakfast, for dinner, whatever you shall choose. The second one is this, God is with us. And it's through the trials of life. Joshua says to him, listen, there will be no one that will be able to stand against you as long as you live. For I will be with you as I was with Moses, and I will not fail you or abandon you. Number three, there are others that you can still follow. I know there's a narrative right now out there in the earth, man, that, you know, what's really real with Jesus and the body of Christ and all this kind of stuff. Listen, there are generals still on the earth right now that love the Lord and have not compromised their integrity, that are sold out 100%. And I want you to see this verse. This is really powerful. Verse 2, it says, Three days later, the Israelite officers went through the camp giving these instructions to the people. He says, when you see the Levitical priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant, carrying the Ark of the Covenant of your God, move out from your positions and follow them. Since you have never traveled this way before and they will guide you. I love camaraderie among friendships. You know, people that are kind of in mutual phases of life, but listen, We need to follow some people that have been to where we're going. You guys can go ahead and play. (laughs) Come on, Chiago, you're late to it, man. Let's get on it. Let's do it. I'm just joking. You know, this is really important. Like, that, man, there are people that have journeyed the journey of life that right now you're in the midst of that struggle. And it's great to have camaraderie with people that are in that kind of same place and talk to them about it, but you need to find someone that's free, that's on fire, that's gone the distance 10, 20, 50 years, that's still innocent of heart and still loving Jesus and get behind their life and follow those people into that land where you're going. This is really important. Two more real quick. We're going to take communion to these because this is really, really powerful. His presence has conquered any and all death in the earth. Oh, this verse is so profound. In Joshua chapter 3, verse 14, when the people left their camp to cross the Jordan, the priests who were carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Verse 15, It was in the harvest season, it says, and the Jordan was overflowing its banks. But as soon as the feet of the priests who were carrying the ark touched the water at the river's edge, the water above that point began backing up a great distance away, look at this, to a town called Adam, which is near Zarethan. And the water below that point that flowed on into the Dead Sea until the riverbed was dry. Then all the people crossed over into the town of Jericho. Okay, hold on, just sit with this for a minute. They're supposed to go over. It's like a baptism for them. And the curse that came via Adam's sin, the waters backed all the way up to that point. And the Dead Sea, which by the way, the water in the Dead Sea is the most toxic water on the entire planet. It's filled with death. No life can live and exist in the Dead Sea. And the riverbed in this moment to the Dead Sea runs dry. Do you see the imagery here? The curse, death, has been broken off of the earth, off of our life, and we are able to cross over whatever we think the barrier is for us to get into this place of bountiful harvest and beauty and success, even a land that's filled with giants. But there's spies on that mountain saying, we can go in, we can take it, because the soles of our feet, wherever we put them, God has given us that land. God has given us that place. We can follow others that have gone before, that have made it, that we see, that are carrying that fruit. And lastly, what he has done is worthy of remembrance. You know, when they cross over, each of the 12 tribes, you know, that are individual and collective as a whole, 
they're instructed to take a stone and in the center of where that water once covered, they're to put those 12 stones there as a memorial to what God has done. And I want to challenge you that as you go into this year, we need to first and foremost, every single day, wake up and remember what Christ has done. Maybe for you, maybe you need to wake up and start taking communion every day by yourself and say, Lord, I want to celebrate today once again the broken body of Jesus. I want to take and remember again and celebrate again the blood that was spilled on my behalf 2,000 years ago that made a way for me to cross over whatever barrier and enter into whatever position that you have for me in this world. To remember. And then I want you to think about all the stories and the goodness of what God did do You know, so often we focus on what God isn't doing or what he's not up to or what isn't happening. And that's negative thinking. Leave that behind in 2019 and just start to focus. God, I remember when you did this. God, when you broke through in this realm, when God, when you gave me this provision, when you you gave me a word in season, when, when you came and met me, when I was at my lowest point, write down those stories, record those stories, break those stories out and read them again. Read them again and again. His presence is here. And we worship Him. He's moving in this place. Can we just reflect and remember His death with every eye closed and focused on Jesus? This king who is worthy of our worship that is extending his right hand to our hearts and saying, through me, come and be acquainted with the Father. Come and be acquainted with the person of the Holy Spirit. Come. Come and receive this gift that I am giving you. Quit striving in your own strength. Quit trying to make it all work on your own. Receive this by faith. Come into intimacy. Come and be familiar with me, acquainted with me in my sufferings, in my hardships, in my trials. But take heart as you walk through all those things yourself. Take heart that I have overcome the world. Eat of my body. Eat of my flesh. Drink of my blood that was spilled for you. Let's take as they sing just for a minute.
is this one that is seated and he is reigning above all things. He is at rest upon that throne. He is at peace upon that throne. And your future is secure in him. Do not be disillusioned. The promise is still yours. The promise is still your portion. Cross over that river. Cross over that hindrance into what God has for you. Step in to that which the Lord has for you in Jesus' name. Come in, Lord. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Come on. Hallelujah. Every voice in this place as we close. Let's all stand together. on this truth that God is here and he's moving in your midst even when you don't feel it he's working even when you don't see it he's working by the grace of God through faith I want you to grab a hold of this before we leave today we're going to have our ministry teams come back up but if you're here today and you've questioned when you don't feel it or when you don't see it, whether or not God is working, he wants to come and give you grace today to have faith to see this year that he's working. Intimacy, acquaintance, familiarity, with the Father, with your own heart, and with others. Let's just pray this as we close. Father, come and pull us in. Extend the invitation again, the promise again, the singular purpose again, and invite us whether we know the Lord, and maybe we don't know the Lord this morning, maybe we've been struggling with whatever sickness or disease or, you know, brokenheartedness, to come into that safe place and become acquainted with you again, go deeper with you again. In Jesus' name, listen, we're going to minister here in this room. If you could, when you go get your kids, leave quietly. Otherwise, I want you to stay. Come receive ministry. Start off the year right. Say, hey, I'm going to take a step forward. God bless you guys. We'll see you next Sunday in Jesus' name.